All right, once upon a time, there was a, uh, a woodcutter, and he was looking for a job. He had a family to provide for, and he, was, he needed to make some money, and he needed some stability in his life, so he went to a timber merchant and asked if he could have a job there, and he got the job. They, they allowed him to come on board with the staff, and uh, he was very grateful. He heard a lot of great things about this company, and he was so excited to be a part of the team so the next day he went to work for the very first day on the job and his boss, his manager, took him out into the forest and showed him his section that he was going to be in charge of uh, and said, essentially, this is your section here. Go ahead and cut those trees down. you got a month's time to do it. He was very excited, obviously. He, like I said, he heard a lot of great things about this company. He was just ready to hit the ground running. He went out there and on his very first day, he chopped down 18 trees. He came back at the end of the day and he told uh, his boss, I chopped down 18 trees today. His boss was blown away. He was absolutely blown away. He said, you are literally the best woodcutter I have on my staff right now. You just cut down 18 trees. It takes a lot of my guys about a week to do 18 trees. So obviously he was all kinds of excited, right? Going home with his head this big because he felt like he was on top of the world. He came back the next day with just all of this excitement, all of this enthusiasm, and he was so ready to get back out in the forest, he went back out there, he did everything he could possibly do, and that day he cut down 15 trees. It's all right. But it dropped a little bit. So at the end of the day, he went back to his boss and he said, I cut down 15 trees, and the boss was like, huh, good job. That's great. Let's see what happens tomorrow. So he goes home and he comes back tomorrow and he tries as hard as he possibly can to get back up to that 18 mark and, and the next day, the third day, he cut down 10 trees. And he could not for the life of him figure out what was going on, but each and every day, the amount of trees that he was cutting down was getting lower and lower and lower to the point that the boss had to eventually come to him and say, listen, you know, if we don't start getting back up, if we don't start increasing the amount of trees we cut down, it's just not gonna work out. Like you started way up here, you set the bar so high, but now you're just kind of dropping off. So I need you to, you know, get back on your A-game. So he came back the next day, and he actually came to work about an hour early. He's like, I cannot let this happen. This job is too good. I can't let this happen. So he got to work an hour early. He worked through his breaks. He worked through his lunch break, and he stayed an hour late, but he still only cut down eight trees that day. And he just couldn't figure out what was going on, but he knew he was giving it everything that he had. So he goes back to his boss, and he tells his boss that he cut down the eight trees, and ultimately... The time came that the boss was like, listen, I, I'm going to have to go a different direction here. I'm going to have to let you go. It's not working out. So the guy was bummed out, obviously, but he understood, I guess. He wasn't getting the job done. So he gathered his stuff, he gathered his axe and gathered his salt, and he, and he turned it into his boss. And his boss looked at him and said, hey, wait a second, when was the last time you sharpened your axe? And he said, well, I've never sharpened my axe. I've been too busy cutting down trees. And the whole time, you know, I'm thinking, I, I, I've used this story a, a ton in my sales career because it's all about sharpening your saw, right? Sharpening your axe, getting better at your craft, getting better at what you're doing. Abraham Lincoln said, if you give me six hours to cut down a tree, I'm going to spend the first four hours sharpening my saw. You know, a lot of people have that mindset. But in this situation, I want to bring this to you guys in, in the topic that I was given was the topic of accountability. The topic of accountability, and there's two forms that I want to bring to you guys right now, just about this specific story really quickly. The first one is, a lot of men struggle with asking for help. A lot of men struggle with asking for help. The woodcutter knew he was not getting the job done, but it never occurred to him to go to somebody and say, can you watch what I'm doing? Can I tell you what my day-to-day -day looks like and maybe you can speak into that? It never occurred to him to do that because it's not the way we're wired, right? We're not wired to go to other men and say, watch me, help me. And the flip side of that coin, the boss, the manager. As men, we struggle with finding a guy who we see messing up, who we see making mistakes, who we see walking down a path that, that is not good. We struggle sometimes with stepping into that path and saying, listen, don't do that, <laughs> Right? We struggle with that sometimes. We, so, so the two sides of the coin here, we struggle with asking for help, and sometimes we struggle with stepping into people's lives and offering help. You know, in Proverbs 27, verse 17, it says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another person. 
All right, so tonight coming back, I'm going to talk a little bit, very quickly, about accountability, but accountability with a little bit of a twist. All right, so I'm going to ask you guys to turn in your Bibles to me to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4. Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, and we're going to start in verse 9. And while you're turning there, you see, I believe that Jesus calls us to love each other in a very special, in a very unique way. In a very friendship type way. In a very deep friendship type way. I'm going to go over four very quick things tonight from Ecclesiastes chapter 9 uh, to kind of help us with our mindset as we start looking at the relationships that we have with other men in our life and starting to define those relationships. <coughs> so Ecclesiastes chapter 4, starting in verse 9, we're going to read verses 9 through 12. It says, If either of them falls down... One can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. Join me in prayer real quick. Father God, I pray right now, Lord, that, that we take advantage of this time Lord, that we, we remove ourselves from school of ministry students, that we, that we remove ourselves from husbands, fathers, sons, whatever the role we play in life. God, whatever baggage we brought into this room tonight when we came in this evening, God, remove that from our lives and strip us down so that we can, we can have an experience with you. God, that we can utterly just see you, feel you, and hear you in this place. God, be with us right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first point I want to bring to you guys tonight is to, number one, share when you fall. To share when you fall. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. You see, a true friend, a true friend is there. The boss who hired the woodcutter, the boss could have been there and said, listen, I see you're struggling. Let me go out and spend the day with you. Let me help you. Let me see what you're doing. A true friend is not going to let somebody pass, uh, not, friend, not let a friend pass up, right? Not let a friend pass by without stepping into their life and saying, I see the path you're going and I just want to encourage you or I want to warn you. And vice versa, having that friend, having that guy in your life that says, listen, Gary, I want to encourage you or I want to warn you, right? So share when you fall. It's the number one way to keep us from falling, right? If you know you're about to encounter something, if you know you're about to experience something, share that with somebody and, help, and, and let them help you. The second point tonight is to share when you're cold. If two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? You see, there are those moments when we are are having to face a decision, but there's those moments in our lives that we have to do something, but we freeze. We freeze in a way that we just stand there and we're scared that if we say anything or do anything or if we make any moves, we just might mess it up. But that's not what we're called to do. If you feel that way, get with your friend. Get with that guy in your life that has your back, that you can share. Listen, I'm freezing right now. I'm freezing. I'm frozen. I'm stuck. I'm standing still. Help me. So don't be scared to share when you're cold. The third point I have here is to share when you're weak. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. The message version says this. By yourself, you're unprotected. But with a friend, you can face the worst. Oh, man. By yourself, you're unprotected. But with a friend, you can face the worst if you share when you're weak. Share when you're cold. Share when you're about to fall. There was a time in 2002, I was living in, in Dallas, Texas. And, and I traveled for a living. I was on the road about 220 days a year. So I wasn't at home too, too much. And I had an apartment with a couple buddies of mine. Now, when I say a couple buddies of mine, I lived in a one-bedroom apartment with six dudes. <laughs> it was epic. 
<laughs> um, you would walk into the one bedroom, and there were six twin beds, no frames, no nothing. Six twin beds just laying on the floor. It was like a slumber party every night. Don't judge me. That's what I had to do. Uh, it was like a slumber party. So what we would do, we would, we would hang out, right? So on those nights when we were all home, when we were all there together, we would lay in bed and just talk. We would just talk about life, talk about struggles. Now, I was 20, 19, 20 years old at this time, and one of the biggest struggles for a 19, 20 year old single guy, right, and maybe for some of us today, is lust. Just calling out, it was lust. So we started talking a lot about that. And, and we shared when we were weak, and we shared the experiences that we were having. And one of the things that we came up with, we we're like, okay, so if, if we know we struggle with lust, and, and we're going to you know, lust when we see something we shouldn't see, you know, that's going to be in our mind, that imagery is going to be in our mind. So how can we help each other? So we, we did a couple studies, we read a couple books, we ran across this, uh, this verse in the book of Job, chapter 31, verse 1, where I made a covenant with my eyes never to look lustfully at a girl. So we took that verse and we like owned it to the point of that was our code word, Job. If we were in the mall, if we were sitting on the couch, if we were watching TV, if one of your buddies said Job, you're walking like this. Because <laughs> you knew something in or around you is about to make you think things that you shouldn't be thinking. So in every situation, no matter where we were, if you heard the word Job, I'm looking at my feet because I don't want to see you. I, I do, but I, I shouldn't see what, I, what is out there. So that's the, that's the thing when we shared when we were weak. You see, when you share when you're weak, you can come up with that, and then you can save yourself. You can save your mind. You can save your thoughts from the things that you struggle with. And then the fourth and final point that I have here is just to add Jesus. Right? To top it off with that, a cord of three strands is not easily broken. Add Jesus. When you're getting back up, when you fall down, when your friend's reaching down, and when your friend's picking you up, when your friend sees that you're cold and he comes to you, when he sees that you're weak and he comes to you and he's standing over you. See, I had this friend in my life one time that when I was struggling with something, I was very angry at God. I was extremely upset with God. And he put his arms around me and he said, it's okay, you be angry, I'll pray. And that man, that comment changed my life. Like, you, you're not going to hold me accountable. You're not going to tell me what to do. You're not going to encourage me. You're going to tell me that it's okay to be angry right now and be angry at God. See, that's what it looks like to add Jesus into the definition of your relationships with other men. Find a man in your life that is saying, listen, you go through what you're going through. I'm going to wrap my arms around you and squeeze you as tight as I can and pray. And that's what that looks like in my mind for accountability. So here's my challenge. Here's my closing. Here's my challenge to you guys. My challenge is this. Twofold. Find a man in your life that can do that for you. I pray that you feel the weight of the world on your shoulders until us as men can find another man that we can do life with like that. Somebody that is not afraid to reach down in our broken, fallen state and pick us up. Somebody who's not afraid to see us when we're freezing cold and run up to us and wrap his arms around us as tight as he possibly can to warm us up. And someone who is not afraid to see us when, our, when, when you're weak and put his hands on you and put his hands in the air and just cover you in prayer by adding Jesus. And twofold on that, be that man. My goodness, man. Be that man for someone in your life. If you can't say tonight, that is who I am for X, Y, or Z in my life, I pray that you can't sleep tonight until you are that man for somebody. This world is desperate for godly men who are not afraid to step out and be that guy. And that's my prayer. So here, I, I said at the beginning, here's the accountability with the, with the twist, right? Uh, the twist is this. What if, what if you had a friend, or what if you were a friend, that was so safe that the worst of you could be known, and you wouldn't be judged, but you'd be loved all the more for sharing that? And what if you had a friend that trusted you so much that the worst of them could be known, 
And they would know in their hearts that you were not judging them, but you were loving them more. Because you were saving them from falling. You were saving them from being cold. You were saving them from being weak. And you were adding Jesus and covering them with Jesus with everything that you are. That's what accountability looks like to me. Father God, I thank you so much for this time. And God, I pray that somehow, in some way, you're looking down on us and you're just smiling from ear to ear with what you see. God, I hope that we're all making you look good today and that we all live up to the definition of a man that you've set before us. I pray these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> what did what did it show? Fifteen? Fifteen twenty-three. Yep, I had fifteen point five. <laughs> Okay, fire away for Gary here. Man, I loved it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely yeah. loved it. Um, having been through classes and accountability is a huge part of my life. Um, I am that guy. To hear you preach on it, just powerful. Powerful. Loved it. You did a really good job uh, just using the scriptures the way they were built to let that build your teaching. Yeah. Like, yeah. crushed it verse by verse style, you know? Right. And you weren't forcing it. It, like, actually, like, that's the that's the power of verse by verse. It's supposed to really support us and let the scriptures speak for it, and the perfect job of that was good. For sure. Your the, balance of personal testimony mixed with that was just right, right on. Yeah. Yeah. And the word usage. Loved how you use the words from the scripture and kind of relate them to personal things. I think start to finish, you tied the whole thing together excellent. Like, I think I could go home and, and repeat everything you said right. to someone just because it was so well developed and organized and, and clear. Something you can really take with take you. I think, I think for me, it, 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 was, it was absolutely awesome. It was, it was a great teaching. But the conviction that was in it, the heart, the, the love that I could feel as you were sharing, the 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 fact that you're living that that's what I get from that that you you live what you're teaching and that's that that is you know I, I relate to that very deeply I really like that that's good you did a great job I agree with all of that and but the best part was the challenge at the end which, which we all need that challenge so thank you for going that extra mile and giving the passion the challenge. I'm going to say one thing that at first I was waiting to know what the topic was. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> it almost got a little frustrating. But in a way, it was like smelling a meal before it was actually served that was good because it made it all the better when you actually started laying it out there and you started eating it, you know. Um, so I will say this, though. Last week, he was the one that was bothered that he didn't know ahead of time <laughs> <laughs> how many points. I like how you tell me how many points. So. I did tell you four points. <laughs> Just he did the, tell us that, but... <laughs> but I think it, it, for my, my point was that it, I think it worked for me, you know, yeah. in, this, in this instance, in this time. In, in stand-up comedy, they call when you tell a joke, and then you use the joke later on again. They call it a tie-in, and you, you have a knack for doing that. You, you told a really long, really intricate story and illustration, and you remembered it off note. And throughout your teaching, you tied in specific pieces right. of that illustration yeah. to your point. And, and it's a really neat gift. What I appreciated just, just sitting under the teaching was that you taught with the heart of a biblical counselor. Yep. And, and you were, you know, when you shared your experience of laying in the bed and talking with the other guys, uh, you, you had already given a few points. And when you gave your illustration, you, you shared your illustration and how you actually used those points. It was real. I've done this, guys. And that's, I appreciated that. Yeah, you took a topic that um, I think a lot of guys would fear listening to. I mean, if, if like, say it was published ahead of time, you know, Gary's going to be speaking on accountability. You know, I can see a lot of guys in, in our universe is going, yeah, I think I'm busy that night. Yeah, I think I'm this and this and this. And so it's it's not, you know, it's it's a lot easier for women than it is for men. But but you 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 crushed it. You really you made it something that um, now becomes like, oh, I want to hear part two. I'm going to hear part three. Right. Good. And didn't you find, too, that if he wouldn't have shared the story about all the guys in the room, that it would have really missed something? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was the vulnerability, the transparency, yeah. 
that really allowed us to to connect that much more with it and so just you know just a reminder of when we can be transparent it really it, it just makes the whole teaching go up several notches just from that standpoint in the way you use that uh, that word Job like walking through the mall you know <laughs> that that brought back like, so many things you know just brought Sorry. me right back <laughs> that was perfect that really tied that all of that together the way you did that holding each other accountable too was a great way to show that yeah. you teach the same way that you yeah. or sitting yeah. here talking to you in the parking yeah. lot I mean just being the same guy you know up there teaching is just very um, just I don't know it engages us really well so let's start to hear some feedback on what Gary could have done differently. The only thing that I would say is you had a you had a really hard start. It was just there was no hey this is me here's who I am none of that. It was just the first word out of your mouth was starting the illustration. So it was, it was kind of a hard start. But I'm reaching with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was kind of like on the same page with Ralph. I I think it would have been, it was great, but I think it would have been better if you had told us a little bit, like, what I'm going to talk about, then told that story. Because the story was awesome, and I'm kind of, like, wondering, like, what, what's his topic? What's it going to be? How's this going to fit in? I'm almost trying to read too much into it, and I could have maybe focused better on what you were saying if I knew ahead of time, but it was good. And yeah. then, um, I wasn't throwing marbles, but you, you do say the word right a little bit. But that's not a word we're focusing on, but I would maybe, if you were teaching on the pulpit, for example, like a real big room... Ease up on maybe, and you'll see that maybe when you watch the video. Sure. But it was great. <laughs> you started so quick there that I almost didn't get where you guys were rooming or what the situation was with the guys. You know, it's like as soon as I started taking notes, you were into the story, and I missed the very first part of it. So there are two things that I don't mind calling you on because I get called on them all the time. <laughs> Otherwise, it, it might sound a little picky, but it has to do with teaching with authority. And this is something that um, I guess you just, you, you're going to have to think about. I don't know. But one thing is, well, first off, and I've been calling this by several people, is never say real quick when you're going to pray. Because it's just, it sounds picky, but really it bothers people. So be careful with that. And secondly, your body placement, say compared to Tim's, Tim was very personal also, and he walked left and right, but his body was a little bit more front and center, even though it was to the side of the pulpit. Whereas when you step to the side of the pulpit, something I do, you get to the, to the angle of it and then back up. And it kind of looks like you're trying to hide or you're taking yourself out. You're, the story is present, but you're kind of disappearing in the mind of the person watching. Whereas if you really want your, your teaching to be authoritative, because you're teaching out of the Word of God and it is authoritative, You've got that confidence to stand front and center when you step to the side. I can see that. Thank you. I think you started a little fast, like just a speech at first. It was kind of like hard to follow you at first. It was clear, I mean, you understand, understand your words, but it was like kind of went out of the gate, you know, and then you found your pace, and then you kind of, you know, which I don't know if that's because you're keeping the time in the back of your mind. Which was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, guess, I guess it would be better to do that in the beginning of it. Yeah. I, I don't like your beard. You've got to give him pride next time. <laughs> Were you nervous at all? Um, I, I got nervous when Tim started wrapping his up. <laughs> and then it was a go time. So I was just wondering if some of the guys said you seemed like you went too fast coming out of the gate. Maybe it was a little bit of nerve. You were just kind of getting your Could have been, yeah. Because yeah, I, think it was. I think you settled down after you got going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. good pace. It's like you found yeah. pace. Yeah. 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 Good that was downhill. And that, I made the same note, you know, I right away I did not use this topic, but then I said, think back and wait a minute, Pastor Mark will come out on his announcements and stuff, right. but sometimes he'll bore right into his teaching the exact same way, yeah. he'll come in with a short analogy, you know, so, he'll, you know, so I was like, well, I'm wondering, man, he'll say yeah, like that. But personally, I think it would have been better to have the, the topic up front, and the reason for it is, 
if you're starting to like wonder what topic it is, you could be losing a little bit of the engagement because you're you're now thinking. I'm I'm looking through my notes, looking what's that, what topic did I give him? <laughs> That's where I was at, you know. And so, you know, you don't want people like having to like. I mean, there may be a time where you want them to guess because it's like a story and, it, you know, the punchline's coming. But I think in this particular way, I would share that, that topic. I've been given the topic of, t of accountability and so forth. I probably wouldn't have shared that you've used this story a lot in your sales presentations because then I thought, um, you know, he's, he's shared this a lot before. Like it so, I, yeah, <laughs> it did. Yeah, because then I, I, think it ta I think it takes it away a little bit. Okay. And so I probably wouldn't have shared that. I thought the biblical teaching was very strong. What you shared from, from Ecclesiastes, your points were very strong. There was no mistake that how they came right up from the scripture, uh, the transparency, you're easy to listen to, your voice, your movement was fairly appropriate and so forth. I don't know, I didn't catch what Jared was saying, but maybe if you watch it on the video, see that. But um, I thought it was just a great, great teaching. But anybody else have anything they want to add that we haven't talked about? The only other note I had was when you when you first went into Ecclesiastes four, you said nine through twelve. I think you skipped nine. That's the first yeah. Said. Well, first he. Yeah, and then he at one time he was like he changed the chapter and then he went back to you know I think you did skip nine. I caught the same thing. Yeah. That was it. I just made a quick note and just saw it. So. Let's give Gary another hand, sure.